The stress strain transformation equations that you have seen until now, if you frankly think about it, it's a little cumbersome that you have to remember several different equations, you have to remember the signs and so on and so forth. Now there exists another method to do the stress strain transformation which makes your life incredibly easy and it relies on a graphical technique. Now this graphical technique was discovered by the German scientist Christian Otto Mohr who was a famous civil engineer in his time and today's topic of discussion that we have is known as the Mohr circle. So let me just go ahead and uh, highlight that part. So we are going to learn about Mohr circle. Right? Now, uh, more Christian Otto Moore, he had this contribution on the Moore circle and later in your later semester when you will learn about structural mechanics you will see he has several other contributions to the field of structural engineering as well. But for our course on solid mechanics let's go ahead and learn how to use the Moore circle to, the, to do the stress strain transformation and you will see the applications of this method are not only in structural engineering when you study geotechnical engineering you will see that there are several places within the soil when you look at the different angles of the soil we are essentially looking at different planes of failure there are also more circle finds a very widespread application so let's go ahead and see that what is more circle how do we draw the more circle and how does it help us for the stress transformation you must already be familiar with these equations or uh, and as well as this figure that you see over here now in mean, this figure essentially is your original element this is rotated at an angle theta and once rotated you have this sigma x prime sigma y prime tau x prime y prime which are these set of equations this we have already seen when we're doing the strain transformation using the equations now if i take this first equation that you see over here and if i pull this term to the left hand side over here so let me go ahead and write the the rearranged equation so this is the rearranged equation where i have simply pulled this term to the left hand side now if I mark this as equation 1 and the last equation that I have if I mark this as equation 2 that you see over here now if I square these two equations and if I add them I will essentially get rid of this angle theta over here so if you can if you just do the simple algebraic manipulations you will see that for for example for this first first term over here this part and this part is the same. So you have the cosine square 2 theta sine square 2 theta becomes equals to 1 for this for this one also the same thing happens and that and and, and the twice terms that is 2 tau x y sine 2 theta times this one it, it has a negative sign it's a positive sign over here negative sign over here so that cancels out so if i square these two and add the reduced set of equation that i get is So this is the reduced equation that I get where I have simply taken the first equation, the second equation and I have squared them. Now, if I express a few of these things as you know certain variables, so let's see what we get. For example, remember that sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2, these are the stresses in the original thing. So I can simply write this maybe as a sigma average over here and if I express this whole term as maybe a variable r square, so let's see what we get. So this equation after making you know these sort of little bit of substitutions over here you get this set of equations that is sigma x prime minus sigma average square plus tau x prime y prime square equals to r square. Now this should remind you of the equation of the circle where something like you know a minus uh, k square plus you know y minus h square equals to r square. So that's the equation of a circle which is centered at sigma average comma zero because here you do not have this is this is just the term 
which is square this is it is not this minus something something is square so it is this is the equation of a circle which is centered at sigma average comma zero and this is the radius of the circle so slowly you are starting to get a hint that i can start with these basic equations over here and i can represent the whole thing in terms of a circle that is over here right so now if you take a look at this one so let's maybe make a note of that that this is a equation of a circle which is centered at sigma average comma zero and with the radius of the circle being this particular the square root of this particular term over here so let's make a quick note of that This is the equation of the circle centered at sigma average comma zero and with the radius of which is square root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau x y square. So now that we have and this is the basic formulation of the Mohr circle. So now that we have a basic formulation of the circle, let's go ahead and sketch the Mohr circle and see how it looks like and what are the different points of that. And you will be amazed that once you draw the Mohr circle, the Mohr circle essentially, you see, if you take a look at this equation, you see this is the sigma x prime and the tau x y y prime right so the more circle essentially different points of the more circle represent the different planes for which you have the stresses which are developing a sigma x prime and, and you know tau x prime y prime. so let's go ahead and sketch the circle discuss the salient points so that you know this equation and the more circle makes a lot more sense So what I have drawn over here is a circle like for, for the uh, a circle for which you have you know I have two set of axes that you see over here of course you know these axes are going to be your sigma x prime and the tau x prime y prime and the circle is going to have a particular radius so let's go ahead and mark the you know different axes for just for generality instead of marking a sigma x prime I will mark it as sigma x just as a general representation of stress and the tau x prime y prime as tau x y and then we will discuss the different points of the circle now it is often a convention it is often a convention to mark you know what is so what is the positive sigma x so this is the x-axis remember and this is the y-axis that we have over here so what is typically the convention that is used that towards which direction is your sigma x positive and tau x prime y prime positive now different books follow different convention the convention which we are going to follow uh, in this particular course is the easiest of all of them which preserves a sense of rotation as you will see in a minute that your sigma x is assumed positive to the horizontally right about this particular direction and tau x y is considered positive vertically down not vertically up so make a note of this one so the sigma x as you have the positive x axis it points towards the right and the tau x y points positive when it is pointing towards the vertically down direction so let's go ahead and make a mark of that So I have marked my positive sigma axis. I have not, I have not attached any particular subscript, although this is, you know, pointing towards the regular sigma or the sigma x that you see. And this is the positive tau, which is over here. Okay. Now, now let's look at the different points which are in the circle. Now, if you see this circle, this circle is centered at your sigma average comma zero, right? So if I write the, the if, I, if I, you know, mark the center of the circle over here, So this particular point C, the distance of this point C from this, uh, from the origin over here must be equals to sigma average, but sigma average remember is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So let's go ahead and mark that one. Right. 
right so this is the sigma average sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 so this is centered there and the radius of the circle we know is this particular guy over here so say if i say uh, take any one particular maybe random point uh, let's say p over here right and if i join these two lines from the center to this particular point P, so if I join these two lines over here, so the length of this line, the radius R becomes equals to what we have seen over here. So the radius R is nothing but right and how do we also get that see if you if you consider you know this guy over here this particular point p maybe this vertical ordinate that you see 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 the vertical the, the x axis the x ordinate is the sigma and the vertical ordinate is the tau that you have over here so if you take this particular point so if and if i mark this this guy over here what i essentially get is So this particular uh, line that you see over here so this is the dimension of this one is tau xy and this particular dimension that you see from the point c to here now remember that one thing that this point c it is at sigma x plus you know sigma y divided by 2 and say this particular point this particular point is for a general you know sigma x say so because you know this is a uh, general tau x y and say this particular point is at a point of sigma x so let's go ahead and mark that dimension as well So if this is your sigma x and this is sigma x plus sigma y by 2, this remaining distance will be sigma x minus of this guy over here. So this particular dimension becomes and you see this for this particular small triangle, right angle triangle that you see, this radius becomes equals to that. The hypotenuse square are equals to the sum of the squares of these, this of this particular line and this particular line over here. And for this one, it is sigma x minus sigma y by two, and this is tau x y. So this radius becomes equals to this one over here. So this is how we overall sketch the Mohr circle, right? So if you see the Mohr circle again, the Mohr circle is a circle which is centered at a point C, which is at a distance of sigma average comma zero sigma x plus sigma y divided by two and uh, the radius of the particular circle at any point so if i have taken just a random point over here and this random point p over here let's say since i'm marking a general point say the value of the stress there is sigma x and the value of the shear remember if there is, is tau x minus or remember that your sigma is positive to the right and your tau is positive downwards not upwards so you can derive the radius of the circle as well which is same as this one over here so now that we have a general understanding of the Mohr circle we have to discuss a few more points right now very interesting and important now can you see that these extreme points of the Mohr circle this one and this one over here so let me go ahead and mark those points maybe so this point over here and this point over here so what can you tell about those two points you see that these two points for this particular point over here this is the maximum value of the stress sigma maximum of the normal stress sigma and what is the value of tau over here the tau is zero right this particular point over here is the minimum value of the stress and the tau also is zero right so where have we seen that we have the maximum stress and the minimum stress minimum uh, maximum and the minimum normal stresses and the taus are zero yes you are right those are the principal stresses so this particular points corresponds to actually your sigma one so that is the maximum principal normal stress and this point corresponds to the minimum stress that is the minimum principal normal stress so let's go ahead and mark those points as well so this particular point corresponds to your sigma one this particular point corresponds to your sigma two right and we will see we will see in some examples that you know how, how do you have to rotate from a point to you know get the principal plane and so on now another point for you to note is that 
you see that the vertically up over here where does in this circle where does the tau becomes maximum remember we had in addition to the principal normal stresses we also had the case where you are the maximum in plane shear where the tau was becoming maximum and when the tau was becoming maximum what was the value of the normal stresses where was the normal stresses vanishing no it was not vanishing the value of the normal stresses was sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 which is exactly these vertical points points that you have over here so it's very interesting so if you mark you know again these two points this vertical point over here and this guy this particular point over here these are actually the points of the maximum shear where also the normal stress becomes sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 so let's just you know go ahead and mark that maximum and the minimum shear so i will write maybe the maximum minima so this is the minima since my uh, tau is positive you know the vertically downwards this really doesn't matter much because remember for tau tau is our friend so for tau the good thing is that once you know one particular you know direction of the arrow and the magnitude all of them get get automatically fixed so in an absolute sense you can say that these are the points where your maximum values that occur right and the corresponding value of the average of the average stress is uh, of, of the normal stress at all the faces is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So now that we have a more or less a crude understanding of the Mohr circle and as we will discuss more we will do more problems you will get a better understanding of the Mohr circle. Let us go ahead and discuss some of the other features which are there of the Mohr circle and how the Mohr circle can help you in locating the principal stresses, locating the planes of the maximum in plane shear, locating the planes of the principal stresses and also help you in the stress transformation. So initially it may seem a little difficult but you will see it will help you easily very immensely once you are familiar to do the sum of the problems which are there.